Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's show, episode 42. It has been a while, but I have forgotten that I have to have some guests on here every now and then, and uh, awesome guests at that, and I decided to kick it off with really, really somebody that uh, recently we've been talking about music, and he knows his stuff. Welcome, everybody. Stoop Kid to the show. How's it going, my man? Hey, what's going on? That's a kick-ass intro you got there, man. I yeah, was jamming. It's, 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 it is, it's it is. Um, honestly, w- what I like about it is that, honestly, my whole production on everything has started very minimal, and it's worked itself up to that intro right there. That, uh, um, But I'm glad you're here, man. Thank you for joining me and the rock and roll. Yeah, um, man. Happy to be here. Let's get started. Um, you know an awful lot about music. Where did you get started, man? What's the, what's the first piece of music that you think you can remember listening to or liking? Oh gosh, um, <laughs> I so I remember my folks taking me to uh, I believe it was a, a local high school's production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Ooh. I think yes. when, I was, when I was like three years old, two maybe two years old, um, and I I have that memory because there was a I, I there was a famous line that came out of me that my folks have never forgotten. I must I must have been two, um, and speaking in full sentences, I guess because <laughs> um, um, the uh, there's a song about you know Joseph was uh, incarcerated in the play and something about he's going to be free. Uh-huh. And and I I'm, I said something to my folks along the lines of Hey, I, he's gonna be free. I'm I'm gonna be free too. <laughs> you know, something something to that extent. So uh, yeah, it's big. Funny you should bring up the I, I I remember it first coming out too, and just the whole name, you know, Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And I'd be mm-hmm. like, what is a Technicolor Dreamcoat? But it sounds. The music really? fucking slaps, man. Yeah, uh, you know, sure, most sure most of Andrew Lloyd Webber's music is really solid. It is. That's an um, excellent start to get started in, into that kind of. Yeah, that. and that's that's kind of uh, the two like pillars of my childhood. Like, you know, my, my folks are boomers, so like, there's you know, your you know, garden variety classic rock thrown in there. And my mom was huge into like ELO um and stuff but my but they were really not like hard rockers at all Mm -hmm. um and so most of what was played in the house was like if it wasn't you know the disney music and stuff because like i'm growing up in the 90s so those movies are like happening as i'm a kid uh there was a lot of that but and and obviously like you know i mean that music costs a million dollars to make and it's all beautiful i mean there's I, i can't like throw shade on the like the classic disney movie songs it's all it's wonderful um yeah, you know, fucking Donny Osmond in uh, Mulan. Like, oh, oh God, all, oh, yeah. oh, man, all that Mulan music is fantastic. But um, so it was a lot of like show tunes, um, you know, shit like that, which I probably like get a, a flair for the dramatic from from that stuff. Like, I haven't really been to a ton of like the classic plays or seen them, but I know all the music from like um, Evita, Sunset Boulevard, all the Andrew Don't Lloyd cry Webber for me, Argentina. All, yeah, all that, that, that that was all played a lot. And then, on the other hand, like my dad was just always, always like he grew up loving the Motown artists and and shit, oh, and the real yeah. the real sappy stuff. You know, the Four Tops and Temptations, and oh, I love that stuff, man. All that shit, um, Earth Wind and Earth Wind and Fire, obviously. Oh yeah. Um. So those are kind of like the. The, the pillars, pillars, your, pillars that I started pillars. with is like musical theater and Motown. I, hey, it's, it's funny to think about. And honestly, that's that's a for so many a great I think a great combo to get started. You know, yeah, it's it's, it's, dif- it's different. You know, for for everybody. You know, yeah. and, you know, and but I mean, it's not like you know you're starting with you know Vanilla Ice. You know, this is my start. It's Vanilla Ice to the right. extreme. This is right. it. Right. You know. um, you know, yeah, that's that's solid. And, and then like, probably as you start going, you know, you're you're adding to your musical, of course, yeah, you know, your musical lore. Yeah, but it, I I didn't like really listen to like the the at the time the current or contemporary music until until I was at least like in grade school. Um, 
and then you know other kids would have the you know like the now that's what i call music cds <laughs> or stuff like that and i started to hear that type of shit i think the first one i had was now five <laughs> and that was a big influence there was a lot of a lot of eye-opening shit for somebody who like i said i mean grew up listening to like 60s and 70s music and musical theater to hear like sh- the the censored version shake it fast by mr <laughs> and uh a big one for me that was on there was uh the superman or kryptonite song by three doors down oh yes and if you haven't heard, they are in Tinley Park this summer opening for Creed on their reunion tour. I've heard that, but I don't know what the if the like what the lineup is for them if they have their original people or not. Uh, Creed or no, Three no, Down. Three Doors Down. Uh, it's um, the singer. There's a couple guys in there. I mean, at this point, if you're getting a three out of five of Three Doors Down, you know, you're like, okay, this is because I, I mean, pretty good. there's there i have a soft spot for for a few of those butt rock bands and hey. like three doors down for sure because that was that was my introduction to like the at the again at the time you know we're talking it was like 2000 or 2001 or whatever but like that was my introduction to the current uh rock music at that time and i was i got obsessed i i got hooked on three doors down quick um and i don't know what but that says do, about I mean. me because I go back and listen to specifically that album, The Better Life, that yeah. that, that song is on. Yeah. It's really depressing. Oh, there's like, some. It's the whole thing. The <laughs> vibe, the vibe is like. Duck and run. Yeah, it's not a really. Uh... The vibe is really. Lo- I mean, when I listen to it now as a fucking 30 year old person, I'm realizing like, oh, this dude, all <laughs> these songs are about getting over heroin addiction and like yeah. losing like people dying and stuff. And I'm you know sitting there as like a seven or eight year old kid like Rock. yeah i feel this man you know like, this is it. This is, if i don't go crazy man i'm gonna go <laughs> superman this is nuts you know, no, I'm... oh i did skip over uh the the other like the i i okay i gotta back up because when i was like uh five years old I definitely I I was in there with uh, like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC boy band mania like for sure and I credit that as much as I credit like Motown and stuff for for my kind of like inner metronome the 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 beat the funk and like I have to always as an adult when I talk about this now and I know better I have to disclaim that like the boy bands as we think of them the 98 degrees in sync uh back backstreet boys when you go back and watch their whole thing it almost makes you cringe because you realize that it was like they literally just stole from the <laughs> from the black artists from like five to ten years prior yeah. and made it and made it you know the, yeah. the record the record labels were like hey this music would sell like crazy if we put some white faces on it Let's and do it's it. like and it's like that's not to say that those kids you know nick carter no. justin timberlake weren't immensely talented and it wasn't their fault and, Joey for tone and, and and it wasn't uh, and it wasn't my fault uh, that that was my exposure to that music no but, i mean i i don't i think you're you know you're you're absolutely right you know i think joey fatone was the one who was like dancing at universal studios like in like the frankenstein costume and then goes into in sync yeah a really big career jump um me but being like, somebody who remembers like i'm in high school when this stuff is coming out and the yeah. girls are like oh my god these guys are beautiful. these guys are great and i was like you don't want them you want me and then i realized i look back and i go well you know i wasn't quite as cool as justin Timberlake <laughs> at that time and try to tell them to like some guy wearing a you know metallica shirt or something probably but you know that being said it's a it's a style of music that you can again you know it influenced so many people well it definitely i mean it influenced the fuck out of me and it you know the again it's it's weird to think about now because I I love I love those in sync songs the yeah. um their nope. self titled their self titled album bye 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 like all the when I listen back still the production holds up it sounds amazing the songs are fucking great the performances are great and it's like this is this was a completely lifted formula from you know boys to men and uh, uh new edition and oh, you know boys to men was awesome too all, were, all of that really but cool. i was just a little bit too young yeah and, oh, yeah. and, and too from the suburbs and white to have heard <laughs> of that stuff so yeah in sync for sure but then so, See, so by was, the time you're like at the age of listening to this stuff what year is this would you say i mean so you know 1998 99 so i'm five or okay. six years old 
I was born like in MTV, 93. Like that's what stinks is like like in 93 or 94, I'm like 11 or 12. Okay. So like the never going to get it, never going to get it. And Vogue yeah. is blasting yeah. the boys. And that's what kind of stinks is you're abs- honestly, I've never really thought of the boys to men thing and that in parallel, but oh, you're yeah. absolutely correct. Yeah, the, the 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 labels put those groups, you know, ninety eight well, degrees, yeah. Backstreet Boys, and Sync. They 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 assembled those groups of people. Those weren't like organically formed bands. Well, that Pearlman guy, the guy who put them all together, was a real sleaze. Supposedly, yeah. Well, and you know. yeah, I, I, I'm well, sure that's, that's big how it shock, works. Big shock. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, but I'm sure they were like, hey, this music could actually sell really well if you just yeah. put white faces on it. Oh, yeah. And uh, and, it, and it fucking did. And it reached, obviously, it reached far and wide, and it reached me, and, and it had a, a massive influence on me. Um, so that was that was another kind of foundational piece, was like the, the boy band music. And then we got to the, 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 the Three Doors Down and like really, really, really depressing, in retrospect, rock music. Um, that that largely carried me through grade school, um, <clears throat> and that was I, awesome too. I mean, like you look back <laughs> on things that you listen to, and you're like, "Yeah, I'm like got a big smile on my face. I'm rocking." Yeah, but, but you said the lyrics are completely juxtaposition of what's really going on in the song yeah i've always been a lyrics last guy anyway yeah, like yeah, i'm i'm too. not hearing the words that you're saying not and not that, a, and I, that's probably not why that's definitely. probably why most of my lyrics have always sucked because i'm like it's not i don't really care what the person is saying so much it's how you're how you're delivering it oh yeah um, that's true too i agree with you and then uh so i think i think fifth grade is where i i and by the way it's crazy because I can break this stuff down and I can think about this because we're talking about acquiring CDs okay. and, and it's just, it's, you know, not to be the old man shaking his fist at the clouds, but it sucks that like the kids now don't, it's not so it's not clean cut like this where you can go back and like, first I got the three doors down CD. And then I got like an usher CD and a little bow wow CD and a Lincoln park CD, you know, and, and, in fifth grade, I got the Linkin Park Meteora album. Great. And that was another like that was another like step up in the in the aggression because there's there's screaming in it. And that was like that was pretty cool. Like what, what? I was that was very and, and and that was another guy who was like really dealing with depression and drug abuse and stuff. And there I am 10 years old, like, yeah, I feel this, you know. Two things. Number one, what's hilarious <laughs> is XRT was on in the other room before I came on, and ELO just wrapped up before I got yeah, started. So you yeah, brought ELO yeah. up, and earlier when I was on my way, the dentist crawling by Lincoln Park came on. Man, and I like to like get back into that, like man, listening to it. And what I thought about when I listened to it today was exactly exactly what you just said, him, and man. what he was going through at that moment or those times. Oh um, my god! My brother-in-law was able to catch him on that last tour before, and it's crazy. Just kind of, it's kind of crazy how like a band like them, extremely talented. Everyone in the band was a pretty pretty talented, mm-hmm. but the fan base can kind of sometimes treat you a certain way because of your musical style changings. Yeah, I don't know, you know, but yeah. You know, you are fair to to say things about the music you are listening. To. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I can't lie and say like I I was into anything they fucking did after after Minutes to Mid. <laughs> even 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 Minutes to Midnight was already like getting kind of soft, was, and was. I wasn't I wasn't, wasn't really like, into the stuff after that. This way, it wasn't. I think that there was a route for them to go in a different way. Um, I just don't think that the route that they went was the way that they could have. Well, I think. Been. I think they made the music they wanted to make and well, like, that, like more power to them. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I'm talking about I, like in the slow vein, like yeah. they still came across as more cheesy than they did being like this. I, and for me listening to the music as the albums progress, because Meteora, as you stated, it's a pretty good album compared to minutes to midnight, oh, um, man, dude. I mean, anytime I hear anything off a of hybrid theory or Meteora, especially Meteora, because that was the one that I owned and still have somewhere. Like that will transport me right back to feeling like I had problems as a 10 year old. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, <laughs> well, so much so that you decide to start really, you get into the 2000s here. And yeah. You start to, like, yeah. Hey, you know what? Let's start, let's start rocking. 
Yeah, so we're talking probably like 2004 that I got uh, Meteora, which I think came out in 2003. So I don't know. It was around there. Um, <clears throat> so because let's think. Uh, yeah, 2004 would have been the end of fifth grade and the beginning of sixth grade, I believe. Um, and my friend, you know, I mean, so I had I was already in the uh, in the band in the school. Okay. Which our school district here happens to have a a guy running it who is just a, a a guru, and like our concert symphonic band when I was in seventh and eighth grade was actually like the best one in the country for our age group. Awesome. Um, we played like festivals all over the state and <clears throat> stuff uh wild like really really good stuff to the point where like our high school band was actually a letdown and a lot of people from my junior high quit because our junior high band was superior to the high school band um but so i i had already been uh i mean i i knew i wanted to play drums from like when i was born um obviously all the rhythmic music and stuff that my parents listened to had a you know played a role in that um and my parents knew i wanted to play drums but they thought the responsible thing to do would be to, to get me to start taking piano lessons before I learned anything else to like have a foundation. Or, and I'm, I'm glad they did that in retrospect. I wasn't happy about it when I was like eight and take piano lessons when I wanted to be, you know, rocking on the drums. But like in retrospect, I'm, I'm glad they did that. Um, and then, yeah, nine years old is like fourth grade is when the band program starts in the school. And then I think fifth grade or sixth grade is when they actually bought me my first drum kit. And that was obviously that was huge. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I had I had friends who like had their own little rock band and that was super cool. And they eventually invited me to join them. They, they were look they had been looking for a second guitarist, but they were like, well, I, this guy could play keyboard instead of the second guitar and that'll be something. And um, I, I think I played keyboard for one song uh, and it and it was and it was Dirty du Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap by ACDC. <laughs> Per, per. Um, and we played that and some other covers at like our friend's block party uh, the summer before seventh grade. That was like the first like show I played. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, we uh, after seventh grade, we got a little bit more serious and we were into, uh, you know, uh, my chemical romance and, and that that vein of stuff. Uh, that's what the chicks were into the you know in middle school and oh, yeah. so i tra i i we, we uh my my best friend who lives who lives next door to me or you know the, the, his family lives next door to my family um he we got him to play second guitar so then i could just move to being the lead singer full time um and i wasn't necessarily great at singing at this point but i i'm a ham and i like <laughs> i just i love the attention i love being the front man there's not, there's no greater feeling in the world than being on stage and everyone has to fucking pay attention to you. I, like, um, and we ended up, so secondhand tragedy was the name of the band. Um, I, I had never, I still to this day haven't heard a secondhand serenade song. So people think it's a reference to secondhand serenade, which was a band at the time. And it's yeah. not, it's not, I, I don't know where the name came from. It just kind of happened. Um, and we played our, our kind of, in my mind, anyway, the pinnacle of that band was we played our like eighth grade graduation dance at the school. The school was cool enough to let us do that. And that is really cool. <laughs> and it was like an all covers set list. I think we played like five songs and we're playing uh, Miss Murder by AFI, um, Make Damn Sure by Taking Back Sunday. Ooh. Um, I stepped out and our guitar, our two guitarists did um, Good Riddance by Green Day and we played sugar we're going down by fallout boy which at the time was like brand new like had just come out and then we we closed it with uh, a, so a song in a band that i still love dearly which is face down by red jumpsuit apparatus and at the time i hadn't really heard of them but everybody all the other guys in my band who were cooler than me were like this is what the chicks are into is like this is like red jumpsuit apparatus so we got to play this they're gonna love you know what i mean so um <laughs> To me, that was like, you know, that that band played some more shows. But to me, like playing the eighth grade dance was like, that was it, it, man. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> that is. was cool. That is. That's really cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, freshman year of high school, I, I, I don't remember a ton. 
Um, obviously, this whole time too, like I'm playing with the school affiliated extracurricular things. I, I played just I played I was I never stopped playing drums. Like even though in my like little bands, rock bands for fun, I wasn't playing drums in this in the school, and I just never quit playing drums. That's awesome. Um, and by this time, <clears throat> I had graduated up to more more metal stuff uh because of the drumming mainly like avenge sevenfold um i used to be able to play the entire city of evil album by avenge sevenfold which i listen back to now and i'm like this is so fast how did i ever do that um r.i.p the rev yes um actually my two like main drum influences were the rev and joey jordison joey jordison so it's been a it's uh, been a rough it's been a rough time for me you know, I saw him a couple times on that uh, debut album. Um, man, he was he was really really good. Jordan yeah, Jordan. I mean, Slip Slip really, Slip really Slipknot. You know, Slipknot's one of the yeah oh yeah one one of the three on here. Slipknot was was in was was essential, and his drumming like absolutely fueled me to learn you know double bass and you know all that stuff. Um, but I didn't have. I didn't have friends who also like played in bands who were into like the like really heavy stuff like that. Yeah. So I took what I could get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Fa- fashionably late freshman year was an all girl band that I played guitar in. Oh, um, awesome. if we played one show, I think we played the like rock for charity event at my high school, my freshman year. But uh, it was, I felt pretty slick, you know. It's an all-girl band, and I'm, you know, and you're I'm just in, right there in the middle. That's how being, the dream you know, come true. Yeah. Pro- probably let him put eyeliner on me, you know. <laughs> and uh, the I was, I think I was dating the 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 girl that was playing drums in that band, and wasn't very good. But uh, yeah, you know, I think we covered like Rage Against the Machine, and I think we played uh, uh, Zombie by the Cranberries, which I've been hearing a lot lately. Um, <clears throat> and then. Uh, secondhand tragedy the members kind of uh well the the main guy the guitarist who's like mom's house we would practice at he ended up going to a different a private school so we didn't see a lot of him anymore and so me and a couple of the other guys that had been in secondhand tragedy started jamming at my house and i was playing drums and so that became no comment um mm-hmm. that was like we were super serious about that like my sophomore year of high school and it was kind of it was uh I, I would compare it kind of to a day to remember okay so it was like pop punk meets kind of heavier metal because like the other guys weren't really into heavy metal but i was playing drums and i was into heavy metal so it was kind of kind of yeah, made it, it was like heavy. Mo- melodic pop punk but just with like fast double bass and stuff basically um awesome. and there's actually like if you if you ever get bored each of these things that's blue is a link. So like no comment. There's 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 footage of a live show that we played at some point during my that's like the, year. maybe maybe uh next month or something we can bring you back and I'll bring some of this footage <laughs> up and we can go through some of it and we could uh have some I was I was there. having a lot of fun looking at some of the fine you know digging some of this stuff that's up. So when you said you were putting this together and then you're like, What's your email? I'm like, I'm excited. What's he sending me? Mm-hmm. And then this popped up. And I'm like, This is this is it. I'm I'm devastated though because um MySpace has finally like completely broken oh, and that's the only place that like we we recorded secondhand tragedy songs uh-huh. on and this is this makes me feel old because we recorded secondhand tragedy the old school way like on eight track like analog recording like we didn't have fucking computers and shit yet Pro and <clears throat> yeah we didn't have none of that like we recorded on fucking hardware and put those songs on MySpace, and they're 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 there, but you can't get them to play. I don't know. I'll figure it out. There's there's also like there's so much footage that never made it to the internet that's just like got to be somewhere in in the house. Um, but uh, no comment played this battle of the bands in the summer of 2009. So this would be between my sophomore and junior year, and that's where I met Subterranean Fishmen, who were playing like death metal. Like oh. we're playing like bloodbath, uh, opath, <laughs> like heavy, 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 stuff. heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. And the rest of the guys in my band were freaked the fuck out, you know. And I was like, "Damn, these guys are sick! Like these are the like badass, edgy kids I've been looking for." And um, you know, we were from Skokie, and they were from Evanston, and I was like, "Ooh, like they're you know they're from Evanston," <laughs> and, uh, and um they like saw me drumming like way overqualified for this like pop punk band that I was drumming in. And 
I guess their their drummer was leaving or was a fill in or whatever. So they they their vocalist ended up uh, reaching out to me and saying, "Hey, would you do you want to come like drum for us? Because you're definitely like capable of like playing this like way heavier, more technical stuff." Um, and that guy's actually like still my best friend to this day. Um, That's awesome. It's cool. How that kind of comes about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so uh, played a lot of shows uh, with the Subterranean Fishmen. Uh, basically as soon as i started that no awesome comment name. awesome no, name yeah yeah i they i got i think they got it from like their high school japanese teacher or something that's cool um but yeah no comment ended basically as soon as i started playing with the fishmen because those like the fishmen were just way more serious about like Man. going going for it and being serious and at this point as a 15 16 year old i'm at this point my mind is made up that the the goal in my life is to be a touring fucking rock star or else i'll just kill myself like that's the only, <laughs> that's, that's the I've only option there. i've been there um, and those guys were kind of of a, of a like mine now none of us had any fucking idea how to like promote shit or anything yeah uh but we played a ton of shows i fucking just absolutely destroyed my body uh playing you know just as fast and hard and loud as possible uh had got it to this day like i have fucking tendonitis in both of my wrists and forearm like if i try to play drums now i could play for like 10 minutes and it starts to fucking hurt I, my neck is all fucked up everything's fucked up oh, man. But, man but it was uh it was it was a lot of fun um <laughs> and uh anyway that was they were into more more kind of darker death metal stuff than i particularly liked at the time like i i liked playing with them and i liked the challenge um but like they were into you know like necrophagist and opeth and yeah, uh, too. yeah. I stuff like see. that and and i i was into at the time i was into like the sceny weenie music uh like you know the dev the the devil wears prada norma jean alisana under oath and so i wanted to make a band like that um and like my buddy and i went to warp tour in 2009 and i saw the devil wears prada and i was like i want to do that i want to make that band where there's like a guy playing keys and you know we all wear super skinny jeans and have the swoopy hair and the chicks love that stuff, you know <laughs> yeah uh studded belts and all that um and so i ended up finding or some guys in high school ended up finding me and knew that i played music and they were like hey you want to come over and jam and so these ended up being uh my two guitarists in pray macabre and i took uh like my best friend at the time who had played bass and no comment i brought him with me because i had gotten him hooked on like the heavy music and everything too <clears throat> and so pray macabre was really like and still is in my mind like my kind of main band that was the one that i took the, the most seriously um and pray macabre i also wrote probably like 90 percent of the music myself um like i was the vocalist i was the front man but i i was writing most of it like in guitar pro and having my bandmates kind of just tweak it to what they wanted it to be and and have them learn the music um <clears throat> and there's like i had, i could go on forever too about the interlap the 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 uh members of one band that become members of another band oh like yeah the, like always. the drummer the drum the the kid that we ended up getting to play drums for pray macabre was like really young like four years younger than us but he was amazing at drums but he was the younger brother of the guitarist from subterranean fishmen <laughs> um <clears throat> and it just kind of it just kind of keeps snowballing like that um and yeah i mean we're still to this day we're still working on getting uh prima Cobb's music re-recorded now that we fucking know what we're doing <laughs> um because everything Isn't that why it's his hi hiatus you yeah, we played our. I, I was I was having fun watching footage from the last show that we played, which was like New Year's 2013 going into 2014. Um, yeah, there there were there was a lot of just like failure to launch uh, with Prima Cobb. There was like after we graduated high school, we wanted to be super serious about it, um, and I, I graduated in 2011. In 2012, um, my guitarist actually had gotten his own car. I think uh you know like he had like an suv and we we got a trailer hitch put on it i was getting ready to get active booking out of state shows and trying to make this happen uh, and then he ended up wrecking his car <laughs> um and so that was kind of failure to launch number one and, and that that sort of thing 
just kind of kept happening. Um, and in 2013, we actually had our own like 15 passenger, you know, church van. And we started playing a few shows here and there out of state, but we never like strung together a tour or anything like that. Um, and it was just kind of a, <clears throat> a multitude of factors. We, we could never hold down a keyboardist ever. So like, I think we played more shows with either a fill in or no keyboardist than we did with a, which was annoying because I was always writing music with keyboards in it because I still like wanted, <clears throat> even as our music, our music kept getting heavier and heavier because uh, uh, then like we all got into <clears throat> deathcore, um, which is still, which I still just absolutely adore. Um, but uh, we're talking about like Suicide Silence, White Chapel, The Acacia Strain, Job for a Cowboy, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, we, uh, we just had too many kind of varying levels of commitment from people in the band. Um, one of one of the, one of the guitarists was kind of in and out of the band, struggling with substance abuse and other things. And then, the, of course, the drummer was so much younger than us that it was tough to do a lot because he's like you know still in high school or whatever. Um, schedule that makes sense. But uh, that the I was watching footage from the final show and it's like, man, that might have been like where my life peaked because <laughs> oh, stop. like 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 somehow stop we're, we're coming we're coming up on 10 years ago but somehow uh i actually managed to successfully promote that show because like pray macabre had been grinding playing the local scene the local venues particularly for whatever reason out in, like the western burbs um but all around this area we we were you know we we had become friends with a number of the other local bands um and yeah, we didn't often have like great turnouts for our sets at these shows. Even if we played kind of bigger shows with bigger turnouts, nobody really gave a fuck about us or who we were. And to be fair, we couldn't hold down a consistent lineup enough to really get as tight as I ever wanted to be. Yeah. But uh, for that final show, we made enough of a stink about, Hey, this is it. This is your last chance to see us. And like people actually showed the fuck up. Um, and we had just released <clears throat> Worthless Generation, an EP, which is still kind of like my magnum opus. And I'm hoping to get it re-recorded and have a better sounding version of it on the Internet. Uh, and people were like really, really into that. And and I was watching footage from it. And like there's there's actually like people in the crowd actually knew the words to my song. And I'm just like, oh, my <laughs> God, dude. it's awesome. It's so crazy. Yeah. And that final show was notable too because the we 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 covered an acacia strain song as like our little encore and i fucking smashed my keyboard to bits that i had had like since i was a kid because you know i felt like it whatever <laughs> um yeah that was that that was a cool show and it was just at uh like a mini golf place in libertyville or something it's uh it, it was really cool um well i'm figuring what we can do maybe if you want is if you're interested next month you could come back like i was talking about and what we'll do is we'll split the second half of your awesome musical career then and yeah. we'll play some of these videos of uh <laughs> you know prey macabre and um and uh subterranean fishmen and all that and we can we can really make it interactive and uh we'll do all of that that would be yeah, really, dude. really cool yeah dude um, I'm, I'm with it um we got a few more minutes here. What I wanted to cover are those tattoos on your arm. Um, you brought them up earlier. Let's show the three symbols. Yeah, really quick. Right, turn in a way that you can see them. It's a little awkward. Oh, that's good enough. Them. That's good enough. Why but, don't you uh, what they are? Yeah. So, uh, so this one is uh, symbology that was used on a few Earth, Wind, and Fire albums. Um, <clears throat> the idea here is like some of my like core kind of musical influences and uh so earth wind and fire is this one uh this is this is obviously the nine point star for slipknot uh this one nobody ever guesses because it is specific album artwork from the weekend's second album called kiss land um a lot of even diehard weekend fans kind of overlook kiss land uh as an album it's very like experimental it's very fucking weird it is it is nothing like his current music it wasn't even a lot like the music oh, he, that he had he done. Didn't play it at the super bowl I'm just <laughs> yeah no there was no kiss land <laughs> zero kiss land at the super bowl um like there was there were nods to his the stuff that he had done before that from the three mixtapes that then became trilogy which is technically his first like yeah. album is trilogy which was really just a remaster a gorgeous 
beautiful remaster of those first three mixtapes that he released in like 2011, 2012. Okay. I, I could do an entire episode just on the weekend. He's, Which we will. And trust he's, me, he's, 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 we'll do it. We'll do whatever he, he, you want he's, to do. He's <laughs> probably the single most influential artist on me, uh, like at least since I've been old enough to drink. Um, Dude, that's what's and, awesome. We have covered so many artists that, that yeah. like, <laughs> I'm still stuck on job for a cowboy. I'm like, man, they are awesome. But like, you know, we've went all over so many different things. And that's, that's what's cool about, uh, you know, when on your arm you have a tattoo of Earth, Wind, and Fire and the weekend yeah. and in between is Slipknot, yeah. you could say <laughs> this is the sandwich that I would definitely think is amazing. Um, yeah. Because all, I mean, the talent of all three of them are, are, I still have it around here somewhere in our, me and my wife's old apartment in one of the old Earth, Wind, and Fire records, there was like a, it was like a poster. And I'd like put it up on the wall mm. and got them all. And I would mm. just stare at it because, man, those guys were awesome. The, the yeah. White, the White I was, Brothers for Dean White and all those. Yeah, I, I was lucky enough to see Earth, Wind & Fire live. Actually, that was the first live concert that I ever went to was my dad took me up to the amphitheater in Milwaukee. And it was Chicago and Earth, Wind & Fire. And yeah. And no, was, it's hilarious. You brought up earlier that you dad, your dad liked four tops. This weekend, yeah. I did that this weekend. This week, I asked a coworker because I asked everyone this question: What was her fav- first concert? And she said, in 1984, her mom took her to go see the Four Tops, and uh-huh. she said that like from the parking garage, bras were like hanging and stuff for no like way. the Four Tops. And I'm like, oh my god, at the bygone era, you're not really going to be going Eesh. anywhere anymore and seeing like bras for Justin Timberlake or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't maybe know. Maybe you will. Maybe you but, will. But the Four like Top I, rule. So thinking of bras for the Four Tops just made me think it was cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, God, all of those. Oh man, all of those Motown acts. God knows how many children they all have. Oh. <laughs> like, it's pretty well, nuts. Well, the bass player from uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers band, his nickname was the Family Man because he had twenty eight kids. Jesus and he started to think, Jesus, twenty eight kids. Yeah. I got one daughter, and I just made the joke earlier. I'm like, I can't even spend time with. Yeah, her. I mean, imagine you know, ima- imagine like, imagine you know, Curtis Mayfield. Like guys who like made sexy music too, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, Mayfield was awesome, man. right? Yeah, like we, we I, I fucking Mayfield. love Curtis Mayfield, Bill Withers, Otis Redding, oh, yes. um, all those Sam and Dave, um, you know, all yeah, really well, like Marvin Gaye, you know. I mean, that's that's a whole that's that's its own genre. Like I, I love it that is. shit. It is fucking love that. It's so timeless. Like I that, I personally talking about Marvin Gaye's dad and just yeah, the garbage he was and yeah. Well, and, and my one of my more controversial like positions is to me personally, like all of that, all of those names that we just mentioned, yeah, way more important to me than any of the still constantly played classic rock. Oh yeah, I, I, fuck, man, I just <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired of Eric Clapton. I'm sorry. Like I'm sick of it. I it's lovely. It's good music. I'm not denying it. And I'm not denying how innovative All those classic rock bands on the radio. Okay. A long yeah. time ago, what I did to go against that was have to dig deeper into their catalog to tell me, is this a real band or is this right. a real joke? Right. And right. you know, but like those songs that they play on the radio, it's it's I'm getting just, to it's the monotony. too many times, man. It's enough I mean, already. And it's like and it's like we're still catering to boomers. Like when all the boomers are dead, am I still gonna have to hear Layla? Like, <laughs> is that like am I still gonna be fucking like listening Scorsese, to the Daisy though? Am I know? still gonna be listening to the fucking Rolling Stones like when I'm 50, 60 years old? Like, please, like, can we move on? Fuck. Like, I'm not saying you. it's I'm not saying it's bad music. It, this, is it's just, this is good. No, it's, it's enough. Bad. It's just, it's enough already. Fuck. Like we're not like our parent, you know, like we're not still listening to like, you know, the Glenn Miller band 
from our grandparents. You know, all like, right, all right. I'm gonna have to stop you there. You can't compare the Glenn Miller band to the Rolling Stones. I'm just saying it's it when are we when can we move on? Can we move on, please? Well, what are we because moving on to? Like whatever we... came after that. Like it's no, all that's it's not all, how it, it works. It, it, it's all it's all subjective. Like and like boomers get so boomer, boomers boomers correct. Boomers get such a boomers get such a big head about this where they say where they say like when we were kids the music was really music and it was memorable and like the Beatles are great. Are you telling me that when you're old you're gonna want to listen to Juicy J? I'm like fuck yeah I am because that's the music I was listening to when I was coming of age. Every single person thinks the music that they were listening to when they were coming of age is the pinnacle of music. Like boomers don't have a fucking patent on what good music is or is not. It no, you're me crazy. absolutely right, but I, I don't really think that like a, a musician from 20 years and now should turn on the radio and listen to the in sync because a lot of people liked it back in the mid 90s and that's going to inspire them to make more better music. Yeah, I mean, in sync was for a time period like as you stated, and even the way you stated it was we shouldn't even acknowledge it at all because it really stole from this whole other right. thing. Right. And so the reality is is if it's boys to men and stuff like that, I'm for that. I love yeah. Tony, Tony, Tony. Cause that's my first name. I love. Yeah. But you Tony. don't hear any of that shit because we're still no, listening yeah. to fucking Led Zeppelin. Well, who also stole all of their music but, from black but people. Be, <laughs> and, but to be fair, the station that did play that music, why are they still playing it? the same six new songs? Like why isn't B96? Yeah. Like Q101 having a, uh, let's go back into the B, the boys to men days. They don't, they don't do that either. Yeah. Well, to be fair too, I mean, we're talking about terrestrial radio here, which is, de- <laughs> which is, which is, which is going to be literally gone as soon as all the boomers are gone anyway. So uh, well, it's kind of a, it's kind of a moot point, I guess. Well, <laughs> awesome, awesome time, my man. Thank you so much. For <laughs> You're welcome. I, I love, um, all kinds of music conversation and man tonight we brought it um thank you for joining us you can follow you want to go ahead and share your stuff first go ahead yeah i mean i'm at stoop k-i-i-d nine three uh you know send all your hate mail tell me how wrong i am that like the beatles and the rolling stones are the second coming of christ and they're the greatest thing to ever happen and nothing will ever be as good as the beatles and the rolling stones um send send that send that all that shit to me at stoop k i i d nine three um uh, we will have no problem with driving over all that mail to him too uh we'll bring him a pizza <laughs> along with the mail Just uh follow follow the all sports scene uh i think it's at the all sports scene uh we're doing our ass cast tomorrow night uh as we normally do thursdays at seven uh, it's a, it's a good time. You're not going to get, uh, any, you're not going to get sports commentary like this anywhere else. No, you guys are really, really, really kicking butt. And honestly, since I started on the Twitter about two years ago, um, Sam is the man and all you guys are, are really, really awesome. Thanks, and man. Really, really, really appreciate you coming on. Um, please follow us on the hookup on music on Twitter and Instagram. Um, follow the sadistic penguin studios, please. Everyone is doing really, really awesome stuff. Last night, Yumper's foe went through the Jason Friday the 13th series. Um, lots and lots of awesome sports stuff. We have an awesome college show. There's going to be awesome articles being dropped. Please check it out. Um, please check out the little videos that we dropped. We just dropped a video this past weekend on Jeff Healy, who is in Roadhouse, underrated guitar player. Um, check that out. But until next time, everybody, again, Mr. Stoop Kid, thank you so much for joining us. It's been lovely. And we will see you guys soon. <laughs>